A tie? A freaking tie! And a black button shirt? What, what is it, the apocalypse? I never dress up, ever! You could tell this video is important. You know what? No. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it, guys. I can't do it. Oh, yes. Whew. I feel so liberated. You know, I feel like Morgan Freeman at the end of Shawshank Redemption. Should I do it like this? Should I do the rest of the video like this? No, I probably shouldn't. Now you guys get to see me put on a tie. It's a zipper tie, by the way. I would never wear a regular tie. That is ludicrous. All the people who have to wear real ties out there to work and stuff like that, I salute you because... I don't know what, I don't know. This has nothing to do with movies. Let's get into my favorite movies now, guys. Should we? Shall we? Let's. Hey there guys, what's up, what's going on? It is Autobot Mike 18 here, back with a video that has been highly requested of you, uh, from me, from you guys. I've just, I get this question all the time, not just by you guys, but by people I come across in life who know that I love movies, okay? The question is all over the place. Every single person asks this one big question, and I am finally addressing it in a video that I'm actually gonna do sufficient editing work on. I know, I never do that kind of stuff. Did Christmas come early this year? I think it did. For you guys it did anyway. <laughs> I saved this video, I saved the idea of this video till the summertime when I actually have time to edit. That's why I normally don't edit because I can't edit during the year because I have school concerns and everything. And last summer I did a big discussion video on A24 films. This summer, I decided to do a big discussion video on my favorite movies of all time. These are the films that have impacted me. These are my personal favorites. These are the films that just make me the film nerd, filmmaker, aspiring filmmaker, aspiring film critic that I am today. It is these films that I feel any person who has any interest whatsoever in the medium of art, specifically filmmaking, Watch these movies, okay? Just watch them. So guys, I, did, I thought of it for such a long time. I was like, how do I start this video off? I thought of a lot of different ways, a lot of different things. I thought of splitting this video up by director. I thought of splitting this video up by genres, film genres. I thought of, you know, doing just a list. But I, at the same time, I said no list. I don't want to do any lists or anything like that because I hate ranking things. I absolutely hate it. I've tried to rank these new movies, but it's just, it's so hard because I, I just can't pick. If you guys would like a full-on list of my favorite movies of all time, I actually made a list, unranked of course, on letterbox.com. Follow me on there, number one. Number two, I made a whole list of my favorite movies. I put like a hundred movies in the list. I'll leave a link down below somewhere in this video. Check out that Check out that list. I'm going to be talking about most of the movies on that list. A lot I am going to be leaving out, though, because I just don't have time to talk about 100 movies, so you got what you get. I'm sorry. <laughs> this video is going to take forever to edit. Yes, I have notes. I have a lot of notes here, okay? I'm going to... Uh, there's no way I'm remembering all these movies off the top of my head. I have but one disclaimer, however, to mention briefly before I start talking about these movies. I have not seen everything, guys, okay? I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, okay? Gather around, gather around your computer screen, your tablets, your phones, whatever you're watching this on. Gather around and keep this to yourselves, guys, okay? Here we go. I am 20 years old. I have not seen every single movie in the world. <gasps> what? You're probably all saying, you haven't seen every movie? You call yourself a film lover? 
Seriously, guys, I have not. So, because I haven't seen every film by Stanley Kubrick, or I haven't seen a Clint Eastwood-directed film, apart from American Sniper, which, let's not talk about that in this video. I haven't seen the Lord of the Rings trilogy, or at least I did when I was a kid, but I don't remember them at all, so I need to rewatch all three of those movies, which just, it takes a lot of time, it involves a lot. I am sorry, but I'm not going to be talking about those movies, because not some I've seen and need to see again, some I just flat out haven't watched. So I apologize if any movie that you guys like is not in this video somewhere. Comment section. Tell me. Give me movies. Give me more movies to watch. Just do it. I don't even care. Just do it. Before I get into movies that I want to talk a little bit about, I'm not going to sit here and do a whole review for all of these because we'll be here for three days straight. I have a bunch of movies that was on my top 100 on Letterboxd. I'm just going to read them out to you guys, read their names. I'm going to splice cut posters. Just They're going to pop up right here, there, okay? Without further ado, I love all of these movies. I wish I'll talk more in depth about them, but I'm not going to. That said, Rocky. Chinatown, Room, Swiss Army Man, Enemy, The Graduate, Fruitvale Station, Her, Interstellar, Inception, The Star Wars Trilogy, The Original Trilogy, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 2, Mad Max, Fury Road, Annie Hall, Forrest Gump, King Kong, the 2005 remake by Peter Jackson, Sullivan's Travels, and The Town. I've given most of those A pluses. Probably almost all of them. A pluses. A few of them haven't. Most A pluses, though. But they're all great. I love them. To start this off, I'm going to just talk about a bunch of different movies. Then I'm going to break it off into directors, my favorite movies from certain directors. Then I'm going to break it off into a few genres. And then I'm just going to blurt out more movies. I hope this works for you guys, okay? Okay. Whenever people ask me, obviously, apart from the, the big question I get of what, Mike, what are some, some of your favorite movies of all time? Obviously, I get that question more than I should. But another question I get asked so much, I was asked this question almost my, my second to first day of film school. We all sat in, in a circle in the sound stage in our, on our campus and our, one of our head professors went around, we went around the circle just to break ice, I guess, and she's like, all right, give me your favorite movie. What's your favorite movie? And I'm like, that's hard, man. I hate picking favorites, but... Whenever people do ask me what my favorite film of all time is, 90% of the time I end up saying Drive. Guys, Drive is a movie that hit me so hard. It's a movie that I think I watched at literally just the right time in my filmmaking career. I think I was probably 17 years old the first time I watched Drive. I was so inspired by that film. I made my own fan film of Drive, based off of Drive. I used the music, I dressed up like the driver. Don't have that online, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's how important Drive is to me. To me guys, Drive is like the perfect encompassment of everything that makes a movie great. It's action packed, it's suspenseful, it is incredibly well shot, it's gorgeous, the music, the performances, it's everything that makes a great movie great. And on top of all of those things, it is a simple, drama about a man who is trying to get out of this certain lifestyle that he is in and protect a woman that he grows very close to throughout the course of a film and it's just such a beautifully told story and it's so high octane it's so emotionally resonant it's one of those movies i could also just watch over and over and over again let's talk about another film that I watched qu quite recently. I didn't grow up when this film was released, but it still has had such a significant impact on my life. That film is Back to the Future. Guys, Back to the Future is just a perfect family film. It's a perfect family film. It's funny. 
it's dramatic, it, it has great stakes in it. Uh, at the same time, it's very adventurous and it's very entirely groundbreaking. And I'll tell you why. Back to the Future is that type of movie that you see done over and over again, time travel, the idea of time travel and the idea of seeing your parents falling um, in love, or your mother falling in love with you. Um, it, it, it's, I've seen that done in so many cartoons and I saw those cartoons before I saw Back to the Future. Then I saw Back to the Future and said, well, there you go. Back to the Future inspired a generation of film lovers and people who loved the art form. And that is why Back to the Future is a perfect movie for me. It's so quotable. It's so, like, subtly funny. It's just a great all-around movie with a great soundtrack and has so much spirit and imagination to it. And that's why I love it. It spoke to me so well. Another film that I also recently watched and feel it's quite possibly one of the greatest epics of all time, The Godfather. It's sitting up there for a reason, guys. The Godfather, guys, is literally just, uh, again, everything that you want in a gangster film, such as a, mo a mob movie like The Godfather. It has everything. It has great themes, rich themes of betrayal and deception and a man coming to terms with his family life and who he has to become for his family and, you know, oh my goodness. It is such a beautiful story with incredible moments of just pure adrenaline and pure excitement. It's a classic for the ages. It has one of the best screenplays of all time with one of the best three act structures you could ask for a movie. It's just a perfect package of everything you'd expect from a hardcore mob gangster drama like that at that time. There's so many things that movie was trying to say. It revolutionized filmmaking in the 1970s. Francis Ford Coppola, the, oh my goodness, um, Al Pacino, that entire cast is flat out amazing and it has an incredible ending. Coming up next is a film that I like to put in its own genre. This is a movie where I love this type of, of film where the movie, the whole movie is set in one confined space and it really just gets on the characters nerves and they just get on each other's nerves essentially. 12 Angry Men. 12 Angry Men is probably my favorite black and white film. It is also one of my favorite dramas of all time. It's one of my favorite courtroom anything. Any TV show, any book, any anything. Anything that involved a courtroom. It's my favorite. It's 12 Angry Men. It has some of the best performances of all time. And for a guy, Sidney Lumet directed 12 Angry Men in 57, I think it was. This, it was one of his first movies, one of his first big movies, and he had a breakout directorial debut with 12 Angry Men. It's the screenplay, the camera work, everything is so perfectly done. What that film is trying to say about acceptance and everything, oh my goodness, the characters are so fleshed out. There's 12 jury members. Each one of them has a distinct personality that you grow to love or hate throughout this entire movie. You grow to sympathize with characters that you hate or you think you hate or it's just such good writing and excellent storytelling and it's all dialogue it's all heavy dialogue but it is so intense all right guys next up this is just an all-around beautiful tale of everything of friendship of perseverance of hope the Shawshank Redemption is a movie that I felt should have won Best Picture over Forrest Gump. I've mentioned Forrest Gump earlier. Pulp Fiction I will talk about shortly. Shawshank Redemption to me is just flat out perfection. It is a classic story of surviving in a Max in a maximum security prison essentially and overcoming every single one of life's obstacles. It is a, a defining film of Friendship, Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins, their utter gold in this movie. The performances, their chemistry, the direction, the score from Thomas frickin' Newman might be one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. That is why The Shawshank Redemption needs to be seen. It's such a great tale. The Shawshank Redemption also just might have one of my favorite endings of all time. One of the most satisfying endings to a film ever.
ever done. I'm going to start breaking this up into directors now because a lot of these directors have made movies that are on my top 100 of all time, on my favorite movies list. Because of that, I'm just going to pick about one or two of their films to just talk about, but I'm going to mention a few others that are also somewhere on my list, okay? So with that said, let's talk about one of my favorite directors, Steven Spielberg. My favorite Spielberg film, whenever anybody asks me that, nine times out of ten, I wind up saying Saving Private Ryan. Saving Private Ryan is also in my opinion, one of the most gritty, realistic films of all time. And the reason it is, no, I was not actually on the beaches of Normandy during World War II. Of course I wasn't. I'm 20 years old. From depiction of war, from what people have just said, from war veterans who have just seen that movie and just given their thoughts on it, I can instantly tell how much effort and timeless vision was put into preparing this movie and making this something really important and relatable to war veterans and just their experiences of of uh, PTSD and everything they've dealt with and that is why Saving Private Ryan is fantastic. It's flawlessly shot and, and, and the shaky cam works such to this film's advantage and I can't remember the last time I watched a movie where the third act is straight up realistic war action violence just to its Finest. Just to give a few other Spielberg nods some love, one of the posters sit right behind me. Jaws is one of my favorite Spielberg films of all time. By far one of the best, probably my favorite summer blockbuster. The Indiana Jones trilogy, Last Crusade, for sure, is my favorite Indiana Jones film. Raiders of the Lost Ark and Temple of Doom are right below them. They're also somewhere in my top films of all time. Jurassic Park, E.T., they're all the best movies of all time. You guys know that. Schindler's List. It's self-explanatory. It's Spielberg. No man has created magic more so than Steven Spielberg himself. Another one of my favorite directors. I've only seen about five of his movies and I can't wait to see more. Mr. Martin Scorsese. I have his poster for Goodfellas hanging up behind me. That is definitely one of my favorite films of all time. Just like The Godfather. An excellent gangster New York crime drama tale. Um, with beautiful use of narration. Same with Shawshank. Both films use narration to a T perfectly. I also really, really love Taxi Driver. Taxi Driver is a classic tale about loneliness and uh, depression and, and just being isolated from everybody else and just the perfect psychopath tale. Robert De Niro, one of his best performances. I love both of those movies so much. But whenever anybody asks me what my favorite Scorsese film is, I usually end up saying The Departed, or as other people like to refer to it as The Departed. The Departed is another classic tale of betrayal, deception, and deceit. It has says so many things about consequences and, and, and how a person, how deceit plays to a person's fate. It says so, no, there's so many great things about fate. It's one of the best screenplays of all time. Its dialogue is so riveting and tense and taut. It's one of the best ensemble pieces also of all time. The Departed is just pure gangster mob crime drama film, just perfection at its absolute finest shots editing, use of soundtrack, it's, it has it all. Use of imagery to foreshadow. It's a perfect mixture of all of those things mixed into one and that is why The Departed is one of my favorite films of all time. Yet to see Raging Bull, but I will soon. Also up is David Fincher, in my opinion, Gone Girl and The Social Network and Panic Room are all three perfect well, <laughs> Gone Girl and the Pan and Panic Room are incredible thrillers, two of my favorites of all time. Social Network is a hardcore drama that is one of the best edited films of all time by far and has incredible performances to a T and an amazing screenplay by Aaron Sorkin. But my favorite film out of all of his movies is Seven. Seven is one of the best, straight up, one of the best, most haunting thrillers slash mystery films I have ever seen. Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman are perfect. I love the world. This really dark and dirty world that is created before us. It's so, the tone throughout this movie is perfect. 
perfection. It's literally carried out perfectly throughout this entire wonderful three-act structure. And in my opinion, Seven has one of, if not the best ending to a movie of all time. I love how Fincher utilizes the camera in that ending. I love the shots. I love the suspense. It is there. It's present. And by the time everything is revealed and all cards are laid out on the table, I could not regain my composure at how blown away I was by how flat out incredible he did of a job on Seven. Alfred Hitchcock is also one of the best directors of all time. Ashamedly, I have not seen Vertigo. I have not seen North by Northwest. I do have a lot of his movies to catch up on, but there are two of his movies that are two of my favorites of all time. I actually don't know which one I like more than the other. I struggle all the time. I always flip-flop the two in my head. I really don't know. One of them is one of the best thrillers of all time, and one of them is the best horror films of all time. So I don't know what to pick. Psycho and Rear Window are flat out incredible. Rear Window is what made thrillers what they are today. It's because of Rear Window we have other really great taut thrillers today. Rear Window is that type of movie that just lays so much speculation on the table and literally stacks it stack high until it keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. It's the direction, the cutting, the use of point of view. Rear Window absolutely perfectly utilize what it means to have a point of view, first person perspective shot. It, it defines so much the, the use of mise-en-scene. It, oh my goodness, lighting and everything is all perfect. The screenplay, Hitchcock is a master of suspense and he always will be. And the same could be said for Psycho. Psycho is one of the best horror films of all time with one of the craziest scripts of all time because of what it, of what it did to its main female role 45 minutes into the movie. Psycho created, in my opinion, one of the best film characters of all time in that of Norman Bates. Norman freaking Bates! Anthony Perkins delivered one of the best performances of all time as the young, sadistic, quiet, mother fanatic. Mother! Mother! Oh, mother! His portrayal of Norman Bates was so good. I love Psycho. It, every twist and turn. Again, another film that just completely unconventional at the time and just broke ground for the horror genre. Psycho is fantastic. <laughs> Paul Thomas Anderson, I can't wait to watch the rest of his filmography, but in my opinion, There Will Be Blood and Boogie Nights are two of the best films of all time. There Will Be Blood has one of the best film performances of all time in that of Daniel Day-Lewis. He is revolutionary in There Will Be Blood. Perfect portrait of a man just on the absolute brink of breaking down psychologically. That is such a great psychological battle between two men with different ideas. The score, the camera work, the cinematography, everything is flat out gorgeous with that movie. I drink it up! Boogie Nights is a movie that is so completely different and so just, it has its own perfect like genre, but it, it has such a great way of showing the descent of fame and, and just dealing with just all like, like a bunch of love and wealth and just how that all, like you may be riding so high up on your high horse, but you are going to come crashing down eventually with all of every good thing that happens to you. That is just what I took away from Boogie Nights. It has an, another amazing ensemble cast. Mark Wahlberg, Burt Reynolds, an amazing soundtrack. It felt so 70s, so 80s, so perfectly. I, I, I just, I love everything that Boogie Nights stood for and was trying to say, and it has excellent moments. Um, sprinkled throughout it as well, like a bunch of these other movies I've been talking about. Excellent, excellent work.